elbow flexion. First, we're going to get the passive range of motion by starting at the maximal flex position and measuring into full elbow extension. Once we get to the patient's passive range of motion, we're going to take a measurement at the ankle, or the elbow. Okay. Then we're going to look at V3, which can either look like a zero, which is no resistance through the entire passive range of motion at all, which is our normal movement. It could look like a one, which is slight resistance through the course of the passive range of motion. That I would not take a measurement because I'm not getting a clear catch. Or it could look like a two where you get a clear catch and then there's a release. So then I would do that again, try to find that clear catch again, and then I would take that measurement at the elbow joint and get a measurement. V1, shoulder extensors. We're going to take the shoulder and bring it into flexion and record the passive range of motion. We are then going to calculate V3 for the shoulder extensors by moving the shoulder into flexion as fast as possible. I'm now going to demonstrate a two, a catch and release for the shoulder extensors. So only at the position in which it catches, I'm going to get a measurement. E1, we're going to record the patient's passive range of motion and move the arm out to the side until we get to their end range of motion. Hopefully it will stay in that position and then we're going to record their shoulder abduction. E3, we're going to bring the arm back to their side. And then we're going to move their arm out to the side as fast as possible. I'm going to now demonstrate a catch and release. Shoulder internal rotators. I'm going to passively, for V1, move the shoulder into external rotation until they get to their end range of motion. And sorry, grab my goniometer and get a nice measurement. Then for V3, I will be moving the arm into external rotation as fast as possible. And there is a catch. Again, one more time, as fast as possible, a catch and a little release. I will take the measurement at the catch. Shoulder external rotators. Again, I'm going to take the passive range of motion for the patient. Move the joint nice and slowly until I get to the end range of motion. Then grab a quick measurement. And then for V3, we're going to move as fast as possible. If there is a catch, we're going to measure the angle at which the catch occurs. Hip extensors. First, we're going to get V1 and take the passive range of motion by bringing the patient's leg up into hip flexion. Normally, you will not be able to um, have the patient maintain their leg like this, so you'll have to get a tech, come in, and hold their leg in this position while you get a measurement with the goniometer. Okay. Thanks. And then for V3, we're just going to move the leg as fast as possible. And again, if 
there's a catch, we're going to take the measurement at which the catch occurs in which you would use your tack for assistance. Hip adductors. We're going to record V1 by getting the passive range of motion, bringing the leg slowly out into abduction, and then grabbing a goniometer and taking that basic measurement. So that was a catch and release. We're going to do it one more time. So we would measure it right there. Before we get started, um, we want the hip actually to be in a slight degree of hip flexion, which is why I just place some pillows under the patient's knee. Then again, when we record the passive range of motion, we're going to use a goniometer to get that measurement. And for V3, I'm going to first demonstrate a score of a 1. So there's some resistance throughout the range of motion, but there's no clear catch. And then a score of a two I'm going to demonstrate where there's a clear catch and then a release. And then again I would record that catch, that angle. The extensor is V1. We're going to take the passive range of motion of the patient's um, knee flexion. We're going to bring the patient from full knee extension into full knee flexion into their passive range of motion and get a measurement. And then we're going to record V3 by moving the patient from um, full knee extension into knee flexion as fast as possible. So we're going to flex the hip a little bit and then quickly flex the knee. Again, with a little catch. V3 ankle plantar flexors. We're going to move the ankle up into dorsiflexion as fast as possible. I'm going to demonstrate a score of a two, catch and release. And a score of a 3 or a 4 would be if there's clonus. If it's a 3, there's fatigable clonus 10 seconds or less. A score of a 4 is unfatigable clonus 10 seconds or more.